Hey everybody, welcome back to Binary Adventure. Thanks for watching, and I'm doing a little bonus video here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you how you can start to actually learn machine code. So I'm going to turn you into the CPU, because I've heard of people doing this. Very few people. <laughs> very, people very few people want to do this. Very few people are as big of a nerd as I am. But assuming you want to do this, um, and it actually does help for writing shell code and various other binary security related things. And it's really also not that hard. Um, what I would suggest you do is use Ida Pro and go to options and go to general and type, it says number of opcode bytes. I usually put in there six and I hit okay. Now this is machine code right here. And um, it's, it's, you know, assembly is basically explained hex machine code. Now, they claim that machine code has a one-to-one -one relationship with assembly language, but that's not really true, as, as proven by a guy who goes by the handle xlogicx. I'll put his talk in the description of the video. But it's a very motivating talk, and he talked about how he actually literally learned machine code when he was younger, and that's just sort of how he thought you were supposed to program. And so it's been something I wanted to do. So I highly recommend you use Ida Pro and enable these uh, opcodes. That's what these are. These are opcodes. And even if you just enable them, after using Ida Pro for a while, your eye will start to pick up on patterns in here. In other words, every time, you know, you'll, you'll see codes like uh, E8 a lot. You know, E8 is call. And um, you'll see E8 down here, call free, call printf, E8, main E8, um, malloc E8. You know, just start to sort of just subconsciously recognize these things. And then we also see a lot of 8B, um, which is a, a, a move. We also see a lot of C7, which is another type of move. Um, and there's definitely more than a few instructions for each type or each um, operator. So, for example, for a move operation, um, there's different instructions that depend on whether or not we're moving something into a register or from a memory address and, and things like that. And you can actually use the Intel opcode table to, to actually just learn what each of these do. But I find it more effective to just notice, just when you're reading the disassembly, just pay attention to the opcodes and you'll slowly learn them. And what's really crazy is, is that you will actually be able to start eyeing up the, uh, the hex itself. And what I mean by that is I believe I have the hex synced up to this window right now. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'm going to go to hex view and see. So, yeah, here we go. So, see, we see C7004A6F686E, 66, and then C740046E79, C640. And then we see another C7 here, and let's look for an E9, right? Let's look for E9. Um well here's here's a five here's the five five. So yeah, the five five put us up here because that's let's see it's the same address all right here. So the fifty five was the push EBP. The eight nine E five is the move EBP ESP. The eighty three E four F zero is and ESP with that. So let's go let's go find that in the hex view. And so here it is, 83E4F0. And then you'll notice that they, most of the time, they actually back up right on each other. So we'll probably see 55 and then 89E5. So 55, 89E5, 83E4F0, 83EC, all right, so 83EC20, and then we'll see E8, E8, 8205, and then we have 0000. zero, zero, zero. Sometimes there are, there are some zeros in between the instructions as well if the previous instruction didn't fill it out. So then we have a C7042444000, E8, 2E26. So see, you can actually start to understand this as if you're the CPU if you know that these are instructions here and you have some frame of reference because um, we know that this is the push EBP. And then um, we know these. Are, this is the next instructions. And then we know this is the next instructions. And then um, we know the EC20 is an instruction. We know that well, there's a lot of E8 instructions, as you can see here. There's lots of E8s. So this is all one instruction block. 
C7 is all one instruction block. E8 again is all one instruction block. Um, 8, 9 is the one instruction block. 8B, C8 is even, it's highlighting them to help you read the instructions. C7. So we could actually go down this as if we were the processor and understand it if you really, really wanted to. Because a lot of times these are just a simple lookup in the um, opcode table or just if you just know what they are. And then the following uh, data is just basically, you know, what register or memory address, uh, you know, usually a memory address or something that we're operating on or some numbers that we're operating on. And so um, reading machine code, I mean, people think it's crazy to just open up a hex editor and because you're just, you're just faced with all these numbers that seem to make no sense. But if you're told that, you know, right here is the beginning of a function or you're told that, you know, uh, up here, for example, was the beginning of the code segment, well, then you know that you, your brain can start to parse this information. You know, I can start to see visually. There's C7s all over the place here. Um, and C7s, which are spaced out by, you know, this many bytes are probably um, C7 instructions, right? So anyway, I just wanted to show you that little tip. If you want to learn machine code, it's possible. You can do it. And um, it's actually pretty neat because you can do certain things with machine code that you can't even really do with assembly. And that was explained in, in a couple of talks that I saw. Um, one of them being that X, or, uh, assembly language is too high level and the other one being breaking the x86 instruction set by Christopher Domus. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that little bonus video with a little tip. And uh, see you next time. Take care. Don't forget to subscribe.